the family had decided to make Horian be the one to fight instead of you and he was a bigger guy, do you think things would have worked out the same way with the UFC as they have? You know, given that you were the small guy, and I think, you know, a lot of people... That would like be it. only one way to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Time machine. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, you think about that, and, you know, if he had been in there as opposed to you, it might have been a whole different, you know, set of circumstances, right? Anything could have happened. <laughs> When you look back and you see how the times have progressed and changed from, you know, people being more of one-dimensional fighters to what it's become today, what are your thoughts on the level, the mainstream level that the UFC has become over the past 20 years? Um, it became a mainstream. I know because little kids, now I travel about, this year was about eight months of the year, I was on the road teaching um, all over the world. And when little kids come up to you, we're talking about eight, ten years old, come up to you, man, one day I want to fight in the UFC. Can you hook me up? Mm -hmm. It's like, you know UFC made it. You see, it's up there. It's uh, kids grow up thinking, one day I want to be a basketball player, one day I want to be a football player or soccer player. Today they say one day I want to be a UFC fighter. So you know it's mainstream now. Um, the main difference is it's a lot of strategy on the game. The guys learn um, different styles of martial arts, but everyone comes from one background. Everybody comes over, comes from, he's a wrestler or he's a boxer, and then he learns the grappling. He's a kickboxer, does that all his life. That's what I call, um, you have to have a home. So, kickboxer, that's his home. He's standing up, he's gonna knock people out. But if you have to grapple, hey, he's very good at it too. He learned that on the side. I learned other styles on the side for me to know what's coming at me. I never knock anybody out. <laughs> but I think, let me punch you. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> George, George Champier calls you his idol. What do you think of George as a fighter and a champion? He's very good on using strategy. He's very good. He was saying earlier that people criticize him about his victories, he's not finishing people. I think about like uh, the movie Gladiator. When the Gladiator comes out, there's a scene that he comes out and just wipe everybody out and the crowd gets silence. What's the matter? Are you not entertained? Did I put up a fight for you? So people criticize, get in there and do what he does. Go do what he does. What about what he said a, a few seconds ago, Hoyts, where he said he would rather go back to the days where there were no rounds to find the best fighter. Do you think that would be an improvement if the UFC went back to that and had, like, say, a 15-minute fight for a non-title and, and a 25-minute with no rounds for a title fight? No gloves, no time limit, no weight division. It would be very interesting. The game changed a lot. It's a, the strategy changed a lot. It's a different strategy. <coughs> Who are your favorite fighters to watch these days? I like to watch the guys that know how to use strategy, not just the guys that come out and do a bloody fight and duke it out. It's pretty much the champions. They know how to make the fight look easy. It's because they take the opponent out of their game, but there's no easy fight out there. There's no easy fight. What are, your, fight. Sorry, what are your thoughts on uh, Johnny Hendricks as a challenger for George St. Pierre? Do you feel like he possesses some of those championship qualities? You're oh yes, about? he's very dangerous, man. The guy's good, prove himself. You see, got a heavy hand, knows how to grapple, push the pace. He got everything. You see, it's just a question of who can deliver this strategy on the day of the fight. Did you, you give GSP any uh, tips for this particular fight? Any strategy? Yes. GSP? <laughs> that you can share with us? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on his corner, man. Come yeah. on, I can't. <laughs> what does it mean to you to have GSP call you the greatest pound for pound fighter of all time? I mean, what does it mean that you have, I guess, a fighter that most people would say is one of the greatest of this time, say you are the greatest of all time? <laughs> I'm a product of my father's work. I just did what I learned from him. It's, uh, yeah, when I fought, there was no time limit, no weight division. Like when I fought Akibono, six foot eight, 490 pounds. Before the fight, everybody's like, man, you crazy. You're out of your mind. How are you gonna fight a guy that big? There's no way you can take him down. 
you cannot punch him out. It's like you're out of your mind. After the fight, everybody was like, oh, come on, he's big and fat. <laughs> really? <laughs> Walk up to a six foot eight, 490 pounds and slap him on the face. You see how slow he is. <laughs> <laughs> what was your toughest fight? I don't know. Winning three fights in the first UFC 20 years ago. Maybe the second UFC, four fights in one night. Maybe fighting Kimo, 250 pounds, chiseled by the gods. Um, maybe UFC four against Dan Severn. Three, third fight of the night, having to face the beast, or maybe, um, hmm, I don't know, Sakuraba, iron 45 minutes in the ring, in the cage with him, in the ring with him, or maybe Akibono, 6'8", 490 pounds. It's tough to pick one. How about when you first came into UFC 1 and you were chosen to do that for your family's name, how much pressure did you feel was riding on you to really win the way you did and do it so impressively for the name of the family? If I thought about the pressure, I would not walk in the ring. I would not walk out. So I never think about it. I'm asleep before the fight, an hour before the fight, my brother had to come in, wake me up, and just, okay, what do you want me to do? So just get ready, and go out, but I'm not thinking about going home that night. I'm not thinking about dinner that night. So pressure, nah, I don't let it get to me. Very flat mind on that, very cold on that point. Was there ever a fight that you wanted over these past, however many years, 15, 20 years, that, that just irked at you, that you never got? Man, there's a, uh, when you're on the top, you don't pick opponents. It's whoever, I never chose opponents, whoever the promoters give it to me, this is the fight, this is the guy, done, let's do it. Never chose one. Was there ever a guy you wanted to test yourself against where you saw like, wow, he's really good and maybe promotional things didn't let it happen or? Being there, done that. <laughs> Ronda Rousey, what do you think of Ronda Rousey? Very good, very good. She's, she's got, good. people have said, you know, she's got the arm bar. She, she has this one thing that she's perfect at, no one can stop her. It's kind of like you, you went in there and people couldn't stop your submissions. So do you see kind of the parallel? She's bringing women's MMA up kind of like you brought. It's not a question that people cannot stop. It's a question that she knows how to set it up. You see, she's the one that knows how to set you up with other stuff and then goes for the arm lock or for the choke or and she's doing what she learned what she's she's not doing kickboxing you see she probably i seen the videotapes of her working out yes she learns the stand-up arts but you don't see her standing there and duking it out to the opponent she does what she learned what she practiced all her life and that's what i always did but do you think that anderson can overcome and, and get back uh, against chris Weidman in the rematch anderson is very good Man, he's so good that he plays with the opponents. He cleaned that division. Let's assume, okay, on that last fight. I'm not saying that Chris is bad, but let's assume nobody's bad, nobody's, there's no easy fight. But let's assume that Anderson put his hand down and did all he was doing and then suddenly just throw one punch and knock Chris out. What would you guys be saying? Amazing by Anderson. Do you see? So, he got caught, it happens, but it only happens if you get in the cage, if you get in there, if you stay home, it will never happen to you. Do you expect him to win in December? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> <laughs>